Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. And today's fountain pen back from the dead is this 1940 Black Shadow Wave Parker Vacuumatic Double Jewel Speedline Filler. There's a mouthful for you. Yes, I've restored quite a few Parker Vacuumatics of late, but this one was a unique challenge. You see, this is how I purchased this pen on eBay. You can see there is a deep engraving of someone's initials and last name in the barrel. What's more, someone tried to gouge the initials out of the barrel and made an awful ugly mess of it. It looks like they used a pocket knife on it. I bought it as a challenge to see if I could get the initials out of the barrel without destroying the pen. So join me as I show you how I got this pen looking relatively normal and also got the bonus of a super flexible gold nib right now. So I've been collecting and restoring quite a few Parker Vacuumatics, as you can see from these four back here. But this one that I recently purchased on eBay is going to be a challenge. Looks like there's an O there somewhere. There might be a 1940, but it is a Speedline filler with double jewels. So a vacuumatic from 1940, I think. No blue diamond on it, but someone engraved their initials in it, and then someone else tried to carve them out. So maybe there's a story there somewhere. An ex-boyfriend, an ex-wife, who knows? just didn't want those initials in there but they're cut pretty deep as you can see those divots are really really deep so is it possible to get those deep engravings out of that barrel and still have the pen work properly and look proper I bet it's gonna look a little bit wonky once I've tried to get that out of there let's take a look at the nib so this is all pre restoration the clip looks pretty good and the end cap lots of scratches and stuff like that it's a double ring and here is the nib it is a replacement nib it says warranted 14 karat iridium i think hard to see through the camera but what i noticed was it is very flexible as you can see right there look at that flex so i'm going to take this pen apart clean it all up and see what we can do about getting those initials out of there and getting this pen back to looking close to normal. So I've got the pen relatively in pieces. I've knocked the feed out of the section and the feed looks like it's in really good shape. Needs cleaning and polishing. The section is also in really good shape. It's got uh, no deep scratches or anything in it and the breather tube needs to be cleaned as well. I'll clean that out with a guitar string make sure it's clear and we'll polish up that gold nib get it all gleaming. It's very very flexible. I'm expecting that to be a wet noodle. I've already taken this out, but I'll show you how that works with my Parker Vac extractor tool. It has a, a screw on the back end and a collet on the front end. This one is the small one that fits uh, most vacuumatics. There is a large one as well for the larger ones. So we screw that on the stem of the vac pump and then we screw this end down, which makes it clamp down on those threads and then we can turn the barrel to loosen the vac pump now this was not easy to do i had to apply a little bit of heat to it as well and once i got it to this point here it hung up because there was all kinds of desiccated sack inside there and so i left it about like that and then pushed a rod through to push it the rest of the way out and get rid of all that old dried up sack in there but that barrel is now loose and I wanted to show you how translucent it is. There, I turned out all the lights so you can see how translucent this barrel is. Look at that, it's horizontally striped. This is black, of course, on the outside, but it is translucent amber through, so you can actually see your ink levels. This is a Made in Canada barrel. Here's another black one here, but you can see that the translucency on this one is horizontal stripes rather than the vertical stripes of this barrel 
that was made in Canada. I find that very interesting. So now I just unscrew that end and tap this call it out of there. And there's our speed line filler and the spring in there is very nice and the whole thing looks very very good. It was all very it had a lot of sack on there. I cleaned that all off and it's working very nicely. So I'm going to resack that. We're going to polish up the cap and the barrel and the blind cap and get that nib polished up and clean and put the whole thing back together again. So the key for me to getting this uh, engraving out of this barrel is going to be keeping the shape of the round barrel uh, but being fairly aggressive to get down into that depth it'll be kind of lopsided I don't want to get rid of that imprint right there uh, but I might be able to take some more material out of the other side so maybe it'll be oval rather than lopsided I don't know uh, we'll find out I've never done anything like this before so we'll see I might end up destroying this uh, I might end up fixing it who knows just remember kiddies don't do this at home because I am not a professional I've got all my micro meshes lined up but I'm going to start with some 400 grit uh, flexible sandpaper it's got a cloth backing the idea is to try to keep the shape of that barrel so I'm not grinding divots into it but actually taking the entire shape down in a curve so I'm going to try this at 400 and then we'll come back so that was pretty pretty deep in there so I actually went at it with my Dremel tool just to take out where that it's not so much the engraving but where that person gouged it was really deep over here so I went at it with my Dremel tool just to get some divots in there to get those impressions out and then I went at it with some very coarse sandpaper I don't even know what this is it's like 150 or something like that and it's flat on that one side as you can see but I'm hoping that I can sort of round it out a little bit we'll go to this 400 grit and see whether we can get those scratch marks out and then we'll move up from there so I've gone at it with my 400 grit and I think I've got those divots out there they are that's where the impression was right there all the divots are gone but you can see if I turn it you can see how flat it is right there but I'm hoping when I polish it up yeah, it won't be that noticeable and I went around and sort of spot sanded a few scratches here and there and then there's one scratch that goes right through that O in the 1940 engraving I'm going to try to get a little bit closer to that without losing the O there I got up close to that and of course that scratch goes through the zero there but I got most of it now we'll move up through the grits of micro mesh and when I get towards the end and some polishing compound and we'll see what it looks like then so I've been through all the levels of micro mesh now other than a little bit of a divot See when I turn it sideways there you can just see it right there and that's where the deepest grooves where there's still a little dot there and there's still zero from the 1940 still there where is it there it is with a scratch through it so I didn't get all of that scratch but I didn't want to lose the zero you take out the scratch and lose the date I chose keeping the date I'm going to polish that up now with some polishing compound as well so I've polished up both the barrel the end cap and the cap I've got them to the point where most of the scratches are out and it's very shiny I've got all the hardware off it there's the cap it's looking pretty good so now I want to resack that vacuumatic piece and then we can put the whole thing back together again so we're going to add our collet to the end of the vac and put the parker vac extractor on tighten it down and we unscrew the barrel there we go and i need my pellet pusher and my sack some scissors to trim it and my calipers to measure measure out 20 roughly 28 28 and a half 
that's good enough 28.6 and I'll just snip that off right there measure it again like it between 28 and 29 millimeters and put my pellet pusher inside the sack and push it into the cup and so it just attaches nicely then I put my Pendragon's pellet pusher in because it's the right diameter like that and we'll add some talc this allows the latex sack to fold back on itself in this sometimes takes a little bit of effort to get it to roll back on itself so I might cut to the chase here actually didn't take much time at all this time sometimes it's a bit of a pain in the ass there we go I just want to make sure it's up against that little ledge there that aluminum ledge and I'm going to add some silicone grease this is actually silicone oil more than grease is more of a lubricant I'm going to put a little bit on the sack and some on the threads here so it slides into the barrel nicely without twisting we get our barrel and I'll sort of twisted back and forth I can almost see it through that transparent barrel there we go get it to move that thread engaged and we're just gonna tighten it down so it's snug there we go release the collet I always give it a little tap with my hammer get that collet loose pull that off and that's working nicely so now I'm going to take the blind cap and put the end jewel back on again I polish that gold ring up with my jeweler's cloth and the little jewel just screws into the bottom and we get a little rubber matting to push on it and turn it tight and there we go now I can put the clip and the clip jewel on here's the clip I polished it all up and I polished up the brass nut as well and we put that in position my clip so it's just in between the two breather holes then we can put the end jewel into the end of that nut I'm sure that's nice and tight now we just have to put the nib and feed together and I've got the feed sitting in a bath of uh, pen flush just getting clean I've already polished it all up so here's the feed ebonite I've polished it all up and it's looking very shiny where you'll see it I've cleaned out the breather tube so it's completely clear I've made sure that that channel that little hole right there and this channel right through here is clear I'll put that breather tube back in the feed as far as it will go and here's the nib I polished it up it came up beautifully and I couldn't read what it said before it was so dirty but under my loop I can read that it says warranted 14 CT which is 14 carat osmeridium so osmium osmeridium iridium it's all voodoo that's the tipping material and again this is not a Parker nib this is a pretty typical replacement nib it's very flexible so perhaps uh, whoever restored this pen previously if it was restored at all decided to put a flexi nib into it so we'll put that nib on that feed line it up right there so it's lined up and here is my section and I polished it up as well and we're going to push this nib and feed into the section hopefully I'll be able to get it in deep enough that's what she said that's what she said I put in a little bit and then I'm gonna try to push it the rest of the way there hopefully that mic is better now so try to push it the rest of the way <coughs> there it's almost to the back of that section looking pretty good I think that's in there deep enough that's what he said uh, this was shellacked in place I'm not going to shellac it in case I need to remove it later I'm gonna put a little bit of real silicone grease not the oil but the grease because I do want it to seal but I also want it to go all the way in that's what she said no! So I'm just going to lightly grease those threads, making sure I don't get any on the back of that feed, which would inhibit ink flow. 
And there we go. The pen is completely reassembled. Now all it needs is some ink. So here we go. Lay your bubbles. Hey, what's a bath without bubbles? Hey, bubbles, come over here, will you? <laughs> well. Now this is a 19, uh, I'm saying it's 1940, Parker Vacuumatic, and it has a 14K flex nib. As you can see, look at this. And here it is all restored and polished up. This is a standard sized Parker Vacuumatic made in Canada in 1940. Parker replaced the lockdown filler with the speed line in 1937. The speed line has the same aluminum plunger with the brass cap as the lockdown, but it stays extended. And here is my 1935 uh, Parker Vacuumatic lockdown with the plunger in the lockdown position. So the blind cap on the speed line had to be extended in length to accommodate the extra length of the plunger. And this makes the pen easier to fill as you can do it with one hand where the lockdown required two hands. Once the U.S. entered the war, the raw materials, aluminum and brass, were required for the war effort, and Parker changed the plunger to a plastic rod and removed the end jewels. And the cap and the end jewels were reduced in size and were no longer made of striated celluloid, like on this 1935 lockdown vacuumatic, but made of all black plastic. And by 1940, all of the sections were black and not striated like this 1935. This pen has the Parker split arrow clip without the blue diamond, which is an indication of the lifetime warranty. Only pens that were $8.95 in price and above were given the lifetime warranty blue diamond. The longer and more tapered blind cap makes this pen post a lot deeper and more securely than the previous generation as well. The barrel of this vacuumatic is translucent to allow you to see the ink level of the pen. However, the translucent celluloid is striated lengthwise rather than the typical horizontal stack celluloid look like you see on this golden pearl. Let's look more closely at this nib. I'm going to try out my new macro lens here. Oh, not too bad. This is a warranted 14 karat gold replacement nib. These nibs were common on lower tier fountain pens and were warranted to be the correct gold content, but were unbranded. When new, this pen would have been fitted with a 14 karat gold Parker Aero nib that said made in Canada. And now you have to really look carefully to see where that engraving was. I think that came out pretty nicely. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is a 1940 Parker Vacuumatic Shadow Wave in black and it has a 14 karat gold flexible nib. Let's check the wetness. You can see it's very wet and it has a good amount of feedback but very smooth, not scratchy in any direction. And this nib is a real wet noodle. As you can see from my downstrokes, just look at the flex in this nib. Very soft, very flexible. And the ink is Waterman's Serenity Blue. And this nib makes a very, very fine line with no pressure, about 0 0.2 millimeters and is very thick indeed. Yeah, it's starting to railroad on me. When you press it, which is around 0 0.9 millimeters, which makes it a Western extra fine to almost double broad on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote.
and for some reverse writing. Very thin and very dry, but it actually does it. And for some quick writing. It's actually not bad if you don't flex it too much, just with regular writing. But as soon as you start flexing it, that feed can't keep up and you start getting railroading which is fairly typical of a vintage nib but also because this nib is not uh, a Parker uh, it is a replacement nib and so it wasn't designed to go with this feed uh, so I wouldn't expect it to be able to keep up under some heavy calligraphy kind of uh, flexing so what are my thoughts on this resurrection I was very nervous about doing this restoration but excited at the same time. It was my first attempt at getting engravings out of a celluloid barrel. I'm very pleased with the results. If you didn't know this was previously engraved, you might not discover this slight waver in the barrel right there. It's hard to see unless you have the pen at the right angle and in the right light. It is easier to feel, but still very subtle. And discovering that this was a relatively rare shadow wave striated celluloid was a bonus. Again, it's very subtle and you really have to look carefully with some backlight to see the ink levels. The gold replacement nib might seem like it devalues the pen at first, but the way the nib writes with this very soft, flexible, juicy nib makes the pen that much more desirable in my view. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote.